We're here at the Norcross um, house there because there's all different events that are taking place and we were very excited to hear about the quilting uh, club showing a lot of different displays of the quilts that are gone along the way and I've always been interested in that because I have friends that have done some and I've seen the beautiful work but I also see the time consuming love that goes into each project. That is true. Okay, so if you could just introduce yourself to our audience and I'll let you take a hold of the mic and, and describe things as we go along, okay? All right. So my name is Valerie Morton. I own Quilts and Treasures on Shaker Road in East Long Meadow. I was approached a couple of years ago by a board member here at the Norcross House who happened to be a quilter and they wanted to try to get more activity here at the carriage house and rent it out so that they could make their um, monthly payments. And so I looked at the venue trying to think how I could help and I knew that there wasn't enough space for a full size quilt show. But miniature quilts would be beautiful in here. So I went back to my club coordinators at the store and gave them the idea, let's do a challenge between the Batik Fabric Club and the Reproduction Fabric Club. We always have a friendly rivalry at the store. I said, let's start with the same block and ask the members to make a small quilt using that block um, with their own genre of fabric. So batiks are fabrics that are hand dyed in Indonesia and they tend to be more modern, colorful, artful um, types of fabric and so the members of that club um, do some really wild and crazy things with them. Reproduction fabrics are the reproductions of the Civil War and 1930s you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s fabrics. And they tend to focus more on traditional patterns with traditional fabrics. They share a lot of history of the quilting with their members. But we always joke about uh, it being the dark side and the light side of the house. So this year is our third year doing the show, and we decided to invite the other two clubs at our store, which is the Scrap Club. And Scrap Club are people that work in all different genres of fabric, but they tend to have a large stash. And so in Scrap Club, they're learning how to organize their scraps, how to make scrap quilts, different patterns that work well scrappy. We also have the Faf Sewing Machine Club, and they are FAF owners who come once a month to learn new techniques and features of their sewing machines. So the challenge this year was that Batik Club people had to use Batiks, Reproduction Fabric people had to use Reproductions, Scrap Club people had to use at least five different fabrics, and FAF Club people had to do a specialty sewing machine technique. If they're in more than one club, they have to combine their challenges into one quilt. So these are some of the quilts that resulted from this challenge and we're so excited to show them to you this evening. We're really excited to be able to see them ourselves. So these two quilts here kind of had a patriotic feel to them, which is why we put them together. Um, Pauline Pafik is in our FAF club and Linda Kehoe is in our scrap club. So you can see that Linda's has um, a large variety of fabrics in it uh, to be her scrap. You can see that this quilt on the top is a reproduction fabrics quilt. She uses fabric from the 1930s. She added buttons to her quilt for a little embellishment. Whereas Paula, in her re reproduction quilt, did some applique flowers. And applique was a very popular thing that, that the quilters did that back then. Dottie down here did a batik quilt. Dottie likes to work in greens, and so green batik certainly worked well for her. Bev Russo challenged herself to design her own border. She used a lot of different strips and a, different, and a very unique setting. Again, she's a, a Repro Club member and you can see that these are more traditional colors. Sue Califf is a member of our FAF Club. She loves machine embroidery and I don't know how close up you can get on that quilt, but there's definitely some beautiful embroidered irises on there. Around her border, she did a ribbon stitch. 
She actually did a double ribbon stitch. This is an exclusive stitch on Faf sewing machines. And tonight I've been demoing the single ribbon stitches, but this one is a double. Down here, Lynn Miner chose to use pinks and greens, a very popular color. She's a reproduction club member. Patty Flannery is a reproduction club member. Cynthia Mahadlak is a reproduction club member. And Cynthia Reimer is a reproduction club member. And you can see how different those look just by the different fabrics that they chose for the different design elements in their block. Nancy Boulay is one of our FAF Club members, and I don't know if you can see all the decorative stitching that she has done around the different pieces in her little quilt. Allie Bassett is a Batik Club member, and she chose some great batiks for this, but I love how she used her embroidery machine to do some Celtic knots in the border. Faith Banus is a Reproduction Club member, and Faith decided to do some hand applique around the outside edge. She also used buttons to be an embellishment, but her, her sense of style is just um, perfect for the time period. Uh, Dottie Eklund is a member of our Batik Club. She's done a beautiful um, peach and green color scheme. Jean Howells is a member of our FAF Club. She has added some rickrack around her borders and embellished her fabric with some sequins. And who do we have down here? Charlotte Barrett is a member of our Scrap Club. She loves to do her quilting with what we call a big stitch. So it gives a very unique look um, to her, her piece. Martha Sabin is in our Reproduction Fabrics Club. She has very traditional um, 1800 fabrics in there. Pat Repsis is a member of our Scrap Club. So you can see that she's got a wide variety of fabrics that she has chosen. And Jan Marsham is a member of our Reproduction Fabrics Club. She's done a very neat um, stitching in the border around hers. Very impressive. Kathy Farrell is a member of our Batik and Faf Clubs. So she has done her piece in Batik Fabrics, but she has used a lot of decorative stitches from her Faf sewing machine to do the quilting on this piece. Cheryl Hentz is a member of our Reproduction Club. Cheryl did a channel quilting around her border, which again was a very traditional way of quilting um, back at that time. Carol Riss is a member of our Reproduction Fabrics Club, and she decided to hand piece some little hexi flowers that she put in the corners of her, her quilt. And I love her little thin inner border. It really sets off uh, her bright yellow color against her dark background. Anne Guyette is a member of our Reproduction Fabrics Club. Again, very traditional colors. Ella Foise is a member of our Faf Club. She's an embroidery machine owner, so she has also done ribbon stitches on her border, and she has done some very decorative embroidery as well. The butterflies were made in a technique called freestanding lace, where she embroidered on a water-soluble stabilizer. After it was done, she washed it, and the water-soluble stabilizer melted away, and that left her with the lace butterflies. Below that, we have Phyllis Fancy. She's a member of our scrap club. I wish I could remember how many different fabrics she told me were in this particular quilt, but I love her flying geese border that she did, and all of those flying geese are all different fabrics. Leslie Addicts is a Reproduction Club member. She's actually one of the coordinators, and I love how she took some of her design elements and pieced them. She made striped fabric and then cut them to give a very unique look. Below that is Barbara Farrell. Barbara Farrell is a member of both the Reproduction Club and the Faf Sewing Machine Club. She used reproduction fabrics and then used a lot of her decorative stitches to quilt her piece in a very unusual manner. 
Our top quilt here is made by Denise Powers from the Reproduction Fabrics Club. I love how she chose one big button just to put in the center of her star. And below that, we have an entry by Anne Beltramello. And Anne decided to make yo-yos to use as flowers to put around her border where she appliqued the vine and the leaves. And she has prairie points that are inward turned to create interest for her, her border on her piece. This is Joan Monaco. Joan is a member of our Batik Club. I love how she used that hot pink batik to really make her design elements pop. Next to her is Debbie Naiswitz. She's a Batik Club member. Debbie tried some really unusual things. She off-centered her block and did some very straight line quilting in it to give it a real modern look. She also did some couching of a fancy ribbon around the outside border and made a three-dimensional um, almost a welted border, so to speak. Beneath her, we have Mary Blanchett. She's a Batik Club member. And Mary used this vibrant green to really make her piece sing. And next to her is Mindy Camry. Mindy's quilt has a lot of stippling done with a um, blendable thread, which is like a variegated thread. But I love how she made her centerpiece so different. She changed the background on some of the pieces and it gave it an entirely different look. You have some talented quilters. Yes, we Just do. And this a small representation. Yes. How many members do you have over, I know you have each particular club, but do you have like a, even if it's a general number for the fatigue and? We have about 75 members uh, with the four clubs all totaled. Um, we have 40 quilts here this evening. All right, Linda Kehoe is a Batik Club member. She chose Batiks, used Batiks for her piece, and she also did some decorative stitching to make the design elements stand out. Next to that, is um, my quilt. I am the coordinator for both the Batik Club and the Faf Club, and I chose to do my borders using the ribbon stitches and then some decorative stitches stacked so that it gives a very unique appearance. I wanted to do something nice and whimsical, and so the gnome kind of met that challenge. Beneath that, Joyce Morissette is a Batik Club member, also a Batik Club coordinator, and she decided to do a piano key border on her quilt. So she pulled a lot of batiks that were similar in color to her main colors. And then she did on her embroidery machine this really neat needle and thread um, stitching to quilt the piece. Next to her, we have Phyllis Peacock. And Phyllis loves to do things based around her last name and so she had to choose that peacock teal to be her main focal point of her quilt. She did a great job. So let me ask you something Valerie. Sure. In the course of making all these different types of quilts, some I know would be a pattern but some of these seem like they're just creative genius. So they all started with the same pattern for the 12 inch block that was in the center. Mm -hmm. And then they were given the creative freedom to add a, a, a border around it to get the quilt up to 18 inches in size. They could applique anything onto it. They could embellish anything. Um, so yes, they really did. They have artistic talent. They, they let their come creativity come out, yes. that's for sure. So we do a lot of community events at our quilt shop. Um, quilters are very giving people. They like to share their talents. We have just finished um, celebrating the dog days of summer, and we made dog beds for the local shelters. We made 74 dog beds that have gone to TJ O'Connor and Dakin. Coming up, we're going to be hosting a Quilt for a Cure Day event, which is our annual fundraiser for breast cancer research. That's going to be on Saturday, September 29th. We do a silent auction in the morning, and then we do a live block auction, a live quilt block auction in the afternoon, which is a lot of fun. All of the proceeds from our auctions, a percentage of the day's sales, all the registration fees, all gets donated, donated to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. 
So one of the things that we like to do is stitch out the decorative stitches that are on our sewing machines. I'm a big proponent of decorative stitches. I don't think that they get used enough. And when you have a stitch out like this, it enables you to see exactly what they're going to look like and make you want to use them more. I always encourage my new owners of sewing machines to do this and make themselves some placemats so that that way they can make something beautiful and also see how their stitches are going to work. This piece here also has some creative features. We've used the beading foot to sew down beading. We've used the couching foot to sew down couching. We've used our stitch sequencing to create our words with our letters, and that can be stitched over and over again, as well as using our single stitch pattern to take and design a motif and then just stitch one at a time. Let me ask you a question, Valerie, especially with the script. If somebody was to say they wanted to have the Declaration of Independence, uh, I know these are em embroidered out. Yes. yes. And, and have it all is that something that, I mean, I know it would be very laborious, but is that something that would be a possibility? Yes. You could do that on many of our regular sewing machines that have alphabets. The easiest way to do it would be on an embroidery machine and to do it in the software, create your design and transfer that to the machine for it to stitch out. Wow. It's amazing software now in the old days. Oh, it's a sewing yeah. machine. My mother was having a hard time just getting the thread through the hole. Right, you know, right. Now we, ha now we have automatic needle threaders, and we also have um, scissors that will cut your threads for you before you take it off the machine. Oh, wow. So, love to show them to you. Yeah. So. And these are, I, I know you had shown these, but yep. I mean, basically, even if somebody was just looking to put it, like I have a plain black top, so yes. if somebody was looking to like embellish, you know, top, they could go through and say, well, geez, I could add this and this, and then they got to have, they have a custom piece. And it could go right around your neckline beautifully, yeah. yes. And even though everybody in the world could buy this. They right. wouldn't have that uniqueness right. that would be added to right. it. And that's why we quilt. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, every one of these quilts that you saw tonight all started with the same pattern. But everyone made a unique quilt using their abilities and their imagination to make it their own. Mm. So how does somebody start? Like if they say, okay, they're, they're a sewer and they want to get involved in this. What's the process for somebody to start? We offer a large variety of classes at our store, and we have a beginning quilting class that will be starting up soon. We have one starting about every two months. It runs for seven weeks. They learn all the tricks and tips that they're going to need to move on to other quilting projects. And then they find their love as to which club they would really Exactly. You know, like if, if they participate inactively. Exactly. Many do, many don't. But we welcome everybody to come into the store and be as involved or as they want to be. So most of our clubs meet once a month. Um, some of them meet every other month. They meet in the mornings, they meet in the evenings, or they meet on a Friday evening. The Friday evening clubs are usually lecture demo only, so you don't do any sewing at the club meeting. It's all um, presentation, lots of show and tell, lots of ideas and information passed along to the members. And then any questions that you have after attending that, you can come back and then get you know, like one on one yes. or, or group yes. assistance in order to be able to create your own Right, right. All of the clubs have club coordinators. Some of them have more than one, and they're always available to help you. They, they want to. Everyone that works at the store loves quilting and loves to see people embrace that art. The FAF Club is for FAF sewing machine owners, and that has been in existence um, for over 25 years. I've owned the store for 14 years, and I know that I was a FAF Club member before I bought the store. The Batik Club is for people who love batiks, who love working with the batiks, um, seeing what can be done with them, and we are the first and as far as I know, the only batik club in the United States that actually meets and has meetings and does challenges and all kinds of informational things. Our Reproduction Fabrics Club started out as Thimbleberries Club and then it kind of evolved into the Joe Morton Club and now the club coordinators um, 
kind of embrace all the designers of reproduction, reproduction fabrics. So they follow Kim Deal, Joe Morton, Pam Buda, get a lot of ideas from their projects and a lot of information from their books. And the last one is our scrap club. The scrap club is for people who have decided their stash is getting a little out of control. They want to know the best way to organize their stash so that they can make scrap quilts quickly and efficiently. And I have one question for you yes. that I would usually use in the beginning, okay. but I purposely wanted to see what was taking place here. What brought you into the quilting? The love for the quilting, not not the business, but but when you first got the love, and then when you went full speed ahead with going with the business. So I was bitten by the quilting bug in 1976 when quilting had its big revival with the bicentennial. I did my senior thesis in high school on quilting and the quilting industry. For my senior home ec project, I made a quilt. And then when I got married and moved here to East Long Meadow, there was a quilt shop. And I started taking quilting classes. And I just, I loved being there. It was my happy place. And when the shop came up for sale, I jumped on it to do it. Natural it's transition. natural, yes. I was a 4-H club leader for 12 years, so I worked with kids, and I did quilting with my 4-H uh, members. So I've got experience working with all, all ages and all levels of quilters. I think it's fabulous. We're so honored to be able to have your time in going over each and every one of these pieces so that we can share it with the LCAT audience. Thank you. Well, I have wonderful members of our clubs, wonderful customers at the store. They kind of indulge all my crazy ideas that I come up with, and um, this is the result of one of those crazy ideas. And if anybody even whether they have experience or not, if they want to come into your store, look around and be able to see, you know, other pieces and ask questions, they're always welcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, well thank you very much thank Valerie. You. We appreciate all your time. Okay, thank you.